Hi, it's Craig with Prolike here. In our last video, I took you through hard shell versus soft shell jackets. And in that video, I present you with a range of products to help uh, demonstrate some of the advantages and disadvantages of the different offerings in the market. In this video, I'm going to talk about down versus synthetic insulation. And once again, I'm, I've you know, laid out a range of products that are currently in the market to help walk you through some of the advantages and disadvantages of down versus synthetics versus some of the new entries that are kind of in between those two. Um, some of the things that uh, traditionally get talked about when you're comparing down versus synthetics is the warmth to weight ratio, compressibility, the durability of the insulation, which is uh, you know how rapidly does it break down every time you compress it versus you know does it withstand uh, being compressed very well, and then moisture tolerance, which is you know does the uh, insulation continue to keep you warm even if it happens to get wet, which is uh, of critical importance in certain situations. Also, we want to look at breathability, which arguably has become the biggest point of uh, differentiation among the products that are available in the market right now. And lastly, we want to look at price. So let's start with warmth to weight ratio. Nothing currently comes close to down. Down, you know, just as simply as I can state it, is superior to any synthetic when it comes to warmth to weight ratio. All things being equal, meaning two comparable jackets with comparable shell fabrics, comparable liners, and with comparable amounts of uh, fill insulation, down is going to keep you warmer. Um, the next thing I want to talk about quickly is compressibility. Um, all things being equal right now, down still wins out in terms of compressibility. Um, and it wins out in terms of durability. Historically, synthetics haven't upheld to uh, compressing very well. Every time you compress a synthetic insulation jacket or sleeping bag, you're breaking the individual fibers and they start to lose loft. And so, you know, having run this business for over 10 years now, we see that from our customers who have historically purchased a synthetic insulation product. Uh, they come back a year later, sometimes six months later, and uh, that product has lost a substantial amount of its loft. Not all synthetic uh, products or synthetic insulations break down as easily as others, but it's something to really look at when you're you know, comparing uh, different synthetic jackets and certainly when comparing synthetic insulation to down insulation. The biggest knock on down has been moisture tolerance. And there's been lots of uh, new developments in the market on that, but historically, once again, down has not done that well uh, in the presence of moisture. Um, you've probably heard stories or uh, you know, others have told you about a down product, a down jacket or a down sleeping bag, which has become saturated to the point where the down, cluster, uh, the down clusters no longer maintain their loft and they've collapsed. And at that point, your uh, jacket or your sleeping bag, your down insulation, isn't doing much to keep you warm. There have been some uh, developments in the park uh, in in that market. Uh, I happen to have one here. This is a Rab Neutrino jacket, and the newer generation of Neutrino jackets use a hydrophobic down. Uh, you may recall we did some videos uh, previously around Sierra Designs with their dry down products. Um, you're finding a lot of different companies uh, introducing hydrophobic down products. My position on them is I think they work and I don't think they add um, much downside. Uh, in the case of this uh, RAB jacket, this uh, has a shell fabric that's really wind resistant as well as water resistant. It's Pertex Quantum Endurance and it has a polyurethane coating on it. Um, you know, just like in that hard shell, soft shell debate, sometimes the more wind or weather resistant you make something, the less breathable it is. So a lot of this is a trade-off or a balance between getting the wind and weather resistance uh, as a uh, comparison to how breathable the product is. Um, I actually own one of these. I've had it in very wet environments, very wet snow, and have yet to have my 
down, wet out on that or collapse due to moisture. And mine's the generation prior to this that doesn't use the hydrophobic down. So hydrophobic down, yes, I think it works. I don't think it's the only criteria to look for in a jacket. And a lot of that depends on you know, where you're at, whether you're in a wet climate or a, a very humid climate. In the northern Rockies here, we aren't in as wet or humid a climate, so having hydrophobic down isn't as important of an uh, issue. Let's uh, talk about moisture resistance with synthetics. That's always been their major advantage over down, is that um, all things being equal once again, Synthetic insulation performs much better than down does in a really humid or wet environment. And you're going to get wet in one of two ways. You're either going to get wet from the outside in, meaning the elements, rain or wet snow coming through the face fabric of your jacket and wetting up the insulation, or you're going to get wet from the inside out, which is your body perspiring or moving uh, lots of moisture um, and you need to migrate that moisture or move that moisture from next to your body out to the environment. So it's, you have to move it through the insulation. And that's why breathability is so important. And that's really the main thing I want to talk about today and why I have my uh, test device out here um, to test air permeability or breathability is that some major um, progress has been made with regard to insulations and their air permeability. Uh, to start with, I'm going to compare a uh, PolarTech uh, Prima Loft Eco to a PolarTech Alpha product. This is a new RAB product. This is the RAB Strata hoodie, and we're going to compare it to the Montane Fireball Jacket. The Montane Fireball Jacket has PolarTech Eco. The RAB Strata has PolarTech Alpha, and PolarTech Alpha was specifically built with the United States military in mind, specifically the Special Operations Forces. They were looking for a product that was warm, wind resistant, highly durable, very quick drying, and more breathable than any existing insulation that was out there. And if you think about the way the military was using their insulation pieces, they go from periods of really high exertion where they're carrying heavy packs, and oftentimes they have body armor on, which isn't breathable, so they're working up you know, a pretty high moisture environment in there, and they're wetting out their uh, layering system as well as their insulation system, and then they you know, have to sit for extended periods of time without moving at all. Those are really challenging conditions for a, um, you know, a, a jacket designer or uh, the people that are uh, developing their combat uniforms. So, that's where PolarTech stepped in with their Alpha product. And what it is, is it's a highly stabilized uh, synthetic insulation that allows you to use a more open weave face fabric. So contrast that to your typical down jackets um, where you have to use a, a downproof fabric and a downproof liner, meaning the weave of the fabric's really, really tight so you don't get all the little feathers poking through. Historically, with synthetic insulations, I don't care if it's Thinsulate or Primaloft or Polar Guard, you've had to use the equivalent of a downproof fabric, a really tightly weaved fabric, in order to keep all those synthetic fibers from, you know, uh, migrating through the fabric. You're only as weak or as strong as your weakest uh, or your least breathable or least air permeable part in the system. So. It was actually the face fabric and the liner fabrics that were inhibiting the air permeability or the breathability of those jackets. And I'll show some examples of that. I'll show uh, the new Polar, uh, the Polar Tech Alpha against a traditional down jacket, or in this case, against our Montane down jacket, which has tighter baffling where they've compressed the down more. And you can see the difference in breathability I'm also going to show you the PolarTech Alpha uh, against the RAB Neutrino Endurance Jacket. So you can just see how much that face fabric, that um, Pertex Quantum Endurance fabric, how much it inhibits the air permeability. And to try and give you as close a comparison as possible in the Montane Fireball, we're going to be comparing their Prima Loft Eco against the Alpha. 
and you can see that the Alpha is much more breathable. So Alpha is the first on the market with this that we're aware of or that we've had in the store. We know that lots of other companies are working on this. Specifically, we've been showing some products from Patagonia that are going to use their full range uh, synthetic insulation. It's a proprietary in-house insulation that adds not only increased breathability but also stretch to, to the mix. So those should be hitting the market uh, fall 2014. Um, we also know of one of the other major players in the synthetic insulation space that is showing a comparable or a competing product to the Polartec Alpha which uh, is, a, is a more stable product and allows you to use a more open weave face fabric and lining fabric. So there's lots of interesting developments happening in the synthetic insulation space. And then, just to add more information to the mix, now we've also got some hybrids where they're using mixes between down and synthetic together in the same jacket or sleeping bag. And we just haven't had a chance to play around with any of those yet. It's still too early for us to talk about durability long term for the Polartec Alpha products. Um, what we can say is uh, one of our, or two of our uh, employees here have been using it for the last three months on uh, pretty much a daily basis. And why they did say it started to lose some of its insulating loft, they threw it in the washing machine, washed it, and uh, that loft came back. So you know what, I want to show you the uh, new generation of Polartec Alpha compared to their Prima Loft Sport, which was previously used by the military. So let me hook this up to my air permeability tester and show you just how well this performs to the previous generation solution. Okay, so I have the Polartec Alpha uh, hooked up to the air permeability, uh, the air permeability test, and I have the uh, previous generation of that combat uniform, uh, or at least one entry in that combat uniform debate, which is the uh, Polartec Prima Loft Sport. And you can see there's just no comparison in terms of air permeability or breathability. Once again, here we have the Polartec Alpha, and on this side we've got the Polartec Prima Loft Sport. Okay, this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to quickly take you through some of the breathability or air permeability comparisons. And I'm going to start with the least breathable versus the Polartec Alpha, which was the most breathable of the jackets I am testing. The first is the Rab Neutrino jacket, which as you recall had the Pertex Quantum Endurance fabric. It should be pretty obvious in the video that this fabric really reduces the air permeability of the jacket in favor of making it much more wind and water resistant. The next jacket I'm going to compare to the Polartec Alpha insulation is the Montane Feather Light Down jacket, which as I mentioned earlier places more down into each baffle so that the down is under more compression. The combination of the downproof fabric and the down insulation being under compression is what reduces the air permeability as compared to the Polartec Alpha insulation. Next we had the Montbell Down Air jacket which had air permeability a bit closer to what the Polartec Alpha insulation provides but once again, the downproof shell and lining are what are inhibiting the air moving through the jacket. And finally, I'm comparing Polartec Eco with Polartec Alpha, and although Eco performs much better than the Prima Loft Sport that we tested earlier, this really demonstrates just how much better Alpha does with air permeability. So as you can see, when it comes to the down versus synthetic insulation debate, it's becoming more about breathability and less about uh, tolerance in a wet or a humid environment. Uh, there's been certain things done on the down front with hydrophobic down and improved coatings on the face fabrics and improved DWR, which if you haven't seen our DWR video, make sure and watch that, that really mitigate the exposure that you have with down in a wet environment in terms of the down clusters collapsing and you losing your ability to stay warm. Uh, synthetics still probably went out in the you know moisture uh, tolerance side of things but really the new story is all about breathability and that's where I think this uh, latest generation of synthetic insulation is really winning out. Um, the last thing I want to talk about really quickly is price. Historically synthetic insulation 
products, jackets, sleeping bags, etc., have been much less expensive than down. The new stuff is more expensive, uh, specifically this uh, PolarTech Alpha. It's made in the United States, and so if the uh, jacket or sleeping bag is being constructed or sewn over in a factory in Asia, they have to ship the product all the way over there in order for it to be uh, sewn in with the product. Uh, so not only is the synthetic insulation more expensive than other synthetic insulations, the fact that it's only made in the United States right now makes the shipping costs more expensive with it. So that's my down versus synthetic insulation video. Um, you're going to find product reviews on many of these products, if not all of these products on our website. And given that there's so many new products coming to market in the coming year uh, using some of the new technologies, you can expect me to revisit this uh, topic again uh, very soon. So be sure to uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. And if you have any questions on any of this, feel free to give us a call 406-582-0508 or send us an email to info at prolightgear.com. Thanks for watching.